It's the Monday Morning Show. Today is January 22nd, 2016. I'm Ken LaSalle. I haven't talked about guns yet this year, which seems like an incredible oversight considering that nearly 13,000 people were gunned down in America last year. As we near the end of January, I expect that means we've already killed a thousand people by now. But you know, there are better ways to control overpopulation, just as there are better ways to guard against tyranny, as we've seen throughout the world. Tyranny is not prevented with violence. It is prevented with education. We've seen that time and again. But the NRA tells us that the Second Amendment, which they hold so sacred while deceptively changing its meaning, which was meant for militias and not for murderers, they say the Second Amendment was meant to prevent the tyranny of an out-of-control government, such as one that would prevent needless death and violence. That's right. You and your neighbors have been convinced by this talking point that only needless violence can keep the government in check. As if the Founding Fathers, in all of their wisdom, couldn't think of anything better than... guns! Let's make sure everybody has guns! Because peace is certainly nothing we would want. We want people so afraid of their government that they'll just shrug every time someone is gunned down. What a strange society where we actually believe that our founding fathers wanted us to be armed against each other. Because after all, the government is you and I. It's all of us. The NRA, in effect, says we shouldn't trust anyone. The only thing we can trust is their constant stream of deceitful inhumanity. Don't you feel safer already? But you know, there's more to the NRA than that. And thanks to a new article by Robert Greenwald titled, What We Learned from the NRA's Tax Documents, we can find just a little daylight and truth about what is, let's not kid ourselves, basically a group of domestic terrorists. Where to start? Well, the NRA made over $300 million in revenue last year. They have more money than many island nations, and they used that money to stifle many common-sense gun violence prevention measures, despite those measures supported by the vast majority of Americans. In Wisconsin, the NRA was able to defeat the state's 48-hour waiting period for the purchase of a handgun. They shut down efforts by Congress to require background checks for gun sales, necessitating President Obama's executive order for those checks late last year. Plenty of Republicans, rich off of the NRA payroll, along with the bribes they take from so many others, decried Obama's efforts to save lives as tyranny. Because when the NRA defines tyranny as the absence of senseless killing... How can their devotees believe otherwise? Some of the millions that made it possible for the NRA to create the facade that they are for the very Americans they were aiding in killing were spent on things like publications, such as NRA Family, which this month features a cartoon entitled Little Red Riding Hood Has a Gun. This promises to be the first in a series of classic fairy tales retold to comfort children with the concept of armed and dangerous Hansels, Gretels, and the like riding off into the sunset. The price tag for these publications, in truth, propaganda, was more than $26 million dollars. Back in 2014, the NRA dumped $56.6 million into advertising and promotion to scare politicians into believing that votes for common-sense laws that would, for example, require firearms be locked away, or even just out of the reach of children, were career killers. In case those politicians didn't get the message clearly enough, the same year the NRA spent or at least 
admitted to spending approximately $1.1 million on lobbying, $5.7 million on political expenditure, and another $23 million on unspecified legislative programs. The actual amount the NRA spends to influence legislation is almost impossible to pin down. Between 2008 and 2014, the NRA failed to disclose over $58 million in political spending to the IRS. It seems like the only people left with rights, thanks to the NRA, are the people armed to the teeth, lest anyone else ask for rights as well. Tell me about the rights of the children who have been gunned down. Tell me about the rights of the teachers and the social workers and the bystanders and the many victims of guns. 13,000 victims every year gunned down to make those at the top of the NRA just a little bit richer with every death. So, here's a thought. Why don't we start an unarmed person's rights movement here in the United States? Because I'd like to know, where's my right not to be gunned down by someone who doesn't like the idea of me not wanting to be gunned down? Where's my right to be safe in a public place? Sure, you could say that justice will be served after my death, but really? Has justice stopped the NRA? Has justice been applied for those killed by police acting far beyond the mandate of their badge? Where is the justice? As long as there is a National Rifle Association profiting from death, twisting the truth, making damned sure you have no rights unless you do as they say, there is no justice. The NRA is a terrorist organization, plain and simple. I want justice. And the NRA can kiss my ass if they think that's asking for too much. Until next time, be good to yourself, be kind to others, and let's make this world a better place.